corn boom may expand the dead zone. Farmers say crop too profitable to stop despite many problems downstream. Iowa, because of rising demand for ethanol, American farmers are growing more corn than at any time since World War II. And sea life in the Gulf of Mexico is paying the heavy price. The nation's corn crop is fertilized with millions of pounds of nitrogen-based fertilizer. And when that nitrogen runs off fields in Corn Belt states, it makes its way to the Mississippi River and eventually pours into the Gulf, Gulf of Mexico, where it contributes to a growing dead zone, a 7,900 square mile patch so depleted of oxygen that fish, crabs, and shrimp suffocate. The dead zone was discovered, was discovered in 1985 and has grown fairly steady, steadily since then, forcing fishermen to venture farther and farther out to sea to find their catch. For decades, fertilizer has been considered the prime cause of the lifeless spot, with demand for corn booming more and more. Some researchers fear the dead zone will expand rapidly with devastating consequences. We might be coming close to a tipping point, said Matt Rhoda, director of the Water Resources Program for the New Orleans-based Gulf Restoration Network, an environmental group. The ecosystem might change or collapse as opposed to being just impacted. Environmentalists had hoped to cut nitrogen runoff by encouraging farmers to apply less fertilizer and establish buffers along waterways. But the demand for the corn-based fuel additive ethanol has driven up the price for the crop, which is selling for about $4 per bushel, up from a little more than $2 in 2002. And now Congress has passed a new energy bill that mandates more ethanol than ever before, which will create even more nitrogen pollution, or more nitrogen will be going into the Mississippi, increasing the dead zone. That has enticed American farmers, mostly in Iowa, Illinois, Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota, to plant more than 93 million acres of corn in 2007 the most since 1944. They substituted corn for other crops or made use of land not previously in cultivation. Farmers trying to be a good steward. Corn is more leaky than crops such as soybean and alfalfa. That is, it absorbs less nitrogen per acre. The prime reasons are the drainage systems used in cornfields and the timing of when the fertilizer is applied. The Environmental Protection Agency estimates that up to 210 million pounds of nitrogen fertilizer enter the Gulf of Mexico each year, conservatively. Scientists had no immediate estimate for 2007 that said they expect the amount of fertilizer going into streams to increase with more acres of corn planted because of the ethanol. Corn agriculture practices release a lot, a whole lot of nitrogen, said Donald Scavia, a University of Michigan professor who has studied corn fertilizer's effect on the dead zone. More corn equals more nitrogen pollution. Farmers realize the connection between their crop and problems downstream, but with the price of corn soaring, it doesn't make sense to grow anything else. And growing corn isn't profitable without nitrogen-based fertilizer. You can't ignore the rising price of corn. The dead zone typically begins in the spring and persists into the summer. Its size and location vary each year because of currents, weather, and other factors. 
but it is generally near the mouth of the Mississippi. This year is the third biggest on record. Soil erosion, sewage, and industrial pollution also contribute to the dead zone, but fertilizer is believed to be the chief factor. Fertilizer causes explosive growth of algae, which then dies and sinks to the bottom, where it sucks up oxygen as it decays. This creates a deep layer of oxygen to flee the ocean, where creatures either escape or die. Marine life struggles to survive. Bottom-dwelling species, such as crabs and oysters, are most at risk. They struggle to survive. They just can't swim away. Crabbers complained at a meeting in Louisiana earlier this year that they pulled up bucket upon bucket of dead crabs. If the corn boom continues, the Gulf of Mexico could see an ecological regime change. The fear is that the zone will grow so big that most sea life won't be able to escape it, leading to an even, to an even bigger die-off an even bigger crisis. People's livelihood depends on the shrimp, fish, and crabs in these waters. Already, some of these shrimpers are traveling longer and longer distances to catch anything at all. Given the market pressure to grow corn, the, National, the Natural Resources Defense Council and others argue that the nation needs a comprehensive federal approach to the problem. Among the ideas floated, rules to force farmers to use fertilizers with more care and the establishment of buffer zones to contain runoff. Although these are not nearly as likely because of the price of corn which is soaring, because it's being made into ethanol more and more. But now that it's been mandated, nope, doesn't look good for the Gulf of Mexico. Not good at all. More and more, the Gulf of Mexico will become will become a dead zone. There's no marine life in it. Nope, this is not good. More signs in the last days, and there are many of them. Multitudes upon multitudes.